here's how I prepare my tomatoes. Move it over here where you can see me better. Now, a lot of people you'll watch videos of tomato pie and they like to remove all the moisture from the potatoes. Well, I don't do that because when it, for one thing, I put a crust, I put a top on my pie and most people don't. And when it bakes, all that moisture will go out. So there's no need to remove it. <clears throat> this is a clove of garlic I'm slicing up. And I've got two beautiful heirloom tomatoes here. I might use a third. We'll see how much this makes. Here's the garlic. Okay. This one is a it's not a brandy wine. That looks like a almost like a large red is a historic variety, except that large red has a bigger seed cavity, so yeah, that might be a large red. I grow those sometimes. Pull the stem out. There we go. You don't have to drain them. Like I say, when you cook it, it's going to cook out the moisture, and you don't want the pie to be dry. You want it to be moist and delicious. So, I don't understand why people do that, but Whatever. This is the way I do it. And mine is really good. Everybody likes it. I guess I get some of the seeds out that way. And just I'll dry, dry these on a paper towel and plant them soon. I've got a bunch of tomatoes started from seed just like that. Cut the core out. These are pretty juicy. This is a Georgia streak, I believe, is what it looks like. Because the stripe carries all the way through the blossom end grown those before too, they're pretty good. I grow a bunch of weird historic varieties. I've got one that's uh, called Amora, Amora, Amoris Lutea, which is an Italian variety that's documented to be at least from 1556, grown at a monastery. And it makes a big, beautiful yellow tomato. And I've got like 12 other varieties most of them historic. There. So I did get some of the water and seeds out just by slicing them there. And I'm going to put some of my garlic on here. I'm going to marinate these tomatoes with herbs and garlic for a few hours while the dough is also curing. And I think that helps add to the flavor. That's something that uh, I don't think anybody else does. I'll take me some fresh parsley. Fresh herbs are the best. I don't have any fresh basil yet. It's still in the uh, baby stage. I've got some growing from seed I saved, but it's not big enough to use yet. So I'll have to use dried basil. One more big leaf. Okay, and some sea salt. Balsamic vinegar. Just a drab, a tiny bit, not too much. Olive oil. Dried oregano. Oregano is always good with tomatoes, and so is sweet basil. This is sweet basil here. Greek sweet basil. Okay. 
and we'll put this in the fridge for a couple hours while the dough is maturing.